Okay. So let's get back to algebra because it sounds like the test that you're going to have to take in a month or so is going to be a lot of algebra. Am I correct? Uh, I have no idea. Okay. Well, let's let's we we got into this last time. Let's do more of this. What happens if I multiply? 2x times this quantity 4y plus 3x. What do I get? Uh, let me think. Multiply that by that. What's that? Uh, 8y. Eight, eight 8xy. Eight because I have to multiply the x times the y also. And then when you multiply 2x times 3x, what do you get? It's 6xy. Uh, Actually, it's 6xx or 6x squared. In other words, you do have to multiply the x times the x, but that you can shorten that to x squared. Okay. Okay. Let's try this one here. What should we do here? What's the first step here? Um, to times everything by the x in front. Okay, good. What is this times that? That would be x cubed. Good. What is that times that? x squared. And it needs a plus sign. Oh, plus x squared. Okay, and then finally that times that. And that I don't need the 1. I still have that minus x squared, so now I have to combine like terms. How many x cubes do we have? Uh, should it be x4? No. When you're adding these things, you cannot combine them unless they have the same exponent. So if I have x cubed plus x, that's not x to the fourth. It's only if I'm multiplying can I add the exponents. Okay? So I only have one x cubed here. That's that one right there. So that one carries fourth. I still have it. But how about x squareds? Combine the x squareds. What happens when you combine that x squared with that x, negative x squared? Uh, don't you get nothing? Yes. So those cancel. How many, how many x's do we have? Uh, just one. That, that's it. That's the answer. Okay, remember last time we talked about FOIL or ETET. -E I, I actually, I keep using the term FOIL because I expect you're going to get it in school at some point. But ETET -E is actually a better term. It works better. What's the product? If I multiply y squared plus 1 times x squared plus 1, what do I get? Every term by every term. So let's start with that. Always start with the term on the far left and multiply the other term that's on the far left. So what's y squared times x squared? Uh, it'd be y squared and x squared, Great. right? Yeah, you got it. That's the answer. Now, what's y squared times 1? Um, it'd 
it's y one. Well, anything times one is what? Itself, so it'd be just y two. You got it. Now, the next thing to do is take the next term. In other words, we've multiplied that term by every term. Now we've got to multiply this term by both of these terms. So what's my next thing when I multiply that times that? It'd be just x2. And? 1. There you go. Okay. This is most likely the kind of stuff you're going to get quizzed on. Although, it wouldn't surprise me if they go back and quiz you on basic math like fractions, multiplying fractions, adding fractions, those kind of things. Okay, without me drawing the arrows. Are we using ET? Yeah. Alright, um, is the two and the A the, like, are those combined? Well, you got to multiply the numbers and you got to multiply the letters. So they're separate. Yes. Okay. So first answer would be four. A, uh, what's a times a? Huh? What is a times a? Uh, a cubed. A squared. Or, 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 sorry. A squared. You always add the exponents. Okay, what's the next term? Um, a squared. Now hold on. This was the first term, right? Yeah. This is the second term. What's 2a times b? Um, that would be... Where? No, just 2AB. In other words, if I have 2A times B, then I can't really do anything other than call it 2AB. Okay? The important thing is the sign on it. The sign is plus. Now, the next term is what? What do I get when I multiply that times that? Um, 2AB, right? Minus 2AB. In other words, when, I, when I, I'm really multiplying that times that, okay? So it's minus 2AB. And finally, there's one other term to multiply. That's the last term which means I'm going to multiply that times that. What is, um, would it be zero or... Uh, no, you're multiplying now, not adding. If you were adding, it would be zero. But we're multiplying. But it's B squared. Right, but is it positive or negative? It's a negative. Yeah, because a negative times a positive is a negative. So it's negative b squared. Now simplify that answer. In other words, combine everything you can combine. Uh, there's an ab squared, or two ab squared. Well, now hold on. I don't see any ab squareds. How, let's start with a squareds. How many a squareds do we have? One. Well, four, right? When I say how many, I mean with the coefficient. How many ABs do we have? What's the combination when I combine those ABs? Now, I can add and subtract these ABs because ABs are like all other ABs. They're not like B squareds. They're not like A squareds. They're ABs. So if I've got plus two of them and minus two of them, how many do I have? Zero. Okay, what's the last term? Uh, In other words, those are going to cancel because they. you're right, they do equal zero. Minus B squared? You got it. 
I can see progress, Garrett. Now this one I'm going to write the answer down below. So what's the first thing we need to do here? Um, every, every... ET, ET, yes, or FOIL. We need the FOIL. In other words, we're still following PEMDAS. Okay, remember what PEMDAS means? Yeah. Well, we're going to do the parentheses first. So when you do the parentheses, in other words, we want to eliminate these parentheses. In order for me to eliminate these parentheses, i got to multiply this term times this term. So what's the first term? Uh, 4x times x. So it would be x squared. You got it. What's the second term? With, uh, with sign. By with sign, I mean I need a plus or a minus in front of it. Because if it's not the first term, the first term is the only term you can leave out the plus sign. It's assumed, if I don't write a plus here, that it's a plus, so I don't need it. But for every other term, I need a plus sign or a minus sign. Would it be minus? Well, now hold on. The second term comes from that. Minus? No, there's no minus signs anywhere here. We don't get the minus sign until we get over here, and we're going to do that last. We're not even going to consider this term over here until we finish multiplying these two things together. So what's a positive 4x times a positive 4y equal? A positive 4x times a positive What's four times four? Not four plus four. Four uh, times four. Sixteen xy. You got it. What's the next term? Uh, then it'd be y times x, and okay. that would just be x. That's good. What's the next term? Uh, y times four y, so it'd be four y cubed. Squared. Or squared. Right. In other words, we always add the exponents. And we still have this minus 17xy. can't ignore it. I was just leaving it until the end to talk about. Okay, now let's gather like terms. How many x squareds do we have? Uh, one. Okay, when I say that, I mean go through every term looking for just x squareds and then put the coefficient in front of it. So we really have four, right? Where, oh, you mean just x? x squareds. Consider each of these things different. An x squared is different than an xy. It's different than a y squared. It's the same, or excuse me, x squared is the only thing that is x squared, okay? And there's four of them, so we're going to bring that down. Now, how many xy's do we have? We have that one. That's also an xy, even though we wrote it as yx. That's the same thing, you understand? So we have 17, right? Okay, and then we have minus 17 xy's over there. So combine all three together, what do you get? You yeah, get um, 24xy's. 20, Hold on. When you added the first two, what did you get? I got 17. Okay, and then we're subtracting 17. Well, uh, what happens when you have 17 and you take away 17? So there's zero. Exactly. That cancels. All three of those terms cancel with one another. And you just have 4y squared. You got it. Okay.
first term? That would be... When you're multiplying, you add the exponents. Four, or no, x4. That's x to the fourth. You don't want to say x4 because if I, say, if I write it the way you say it, it ends up like this. So it's x to the fourth or x to the fourth power. Okay, what's the second term? Uh, one x squared. What's the sign on it? In other words, you're right. But I can't just write it like that. Uh, it's I, a I have to plus. combine it with the other term. Plus. And I don't need the, the 1. So, in other words, I don't need the 1, but I do need the plus, plus sign, only that's not the correct sign. What do I get? That was the first multiplication. Second I multiplication get. goes to there. So what should the sign be? Minus. Okay. Third term. Um, plus x to the second power. Good. And the fourth term. One? Or no. That times that. One, or minus one. Minus one. Now combine like terms, simplify. Um, there's, so one four x. Okay, so that's the only x to the fourth. And then two, no, because that's a minus. Correct. So those cloud each other, so that'd be zero. Correct. Minus one. You got it. Good. Let's try something a little harder. It's going to look harder, but in actuality, it's really not a hard problem. It's quite an easy problem. Put my answer down here. Now, this is the same thing as ET, ET. I'm taking this term and I'm going to multiply it by every other term. What do you get when you multiply that times that? Uh, you get x, y, z, z, yeah, x, y, z, 1 okay. over 1 over x, y. In other words, when I multiply x, y, z times 1 over x, y, I just multiply numerators across. x, y, z is when I multiply those two. And the bottom, I can assume there's a 1 under there, so the bottom is just x, y. Okay? Now, before we go further, Instead of multiplying numerators directly across and denominators across, like we did, there's actually something, a step you can take that makes the whole thing a little easier. If you can cancel stuff, do so. This x right there, because it's in the numerator, cancels with that x, which is in the denominator. In other words, that's the same as x over x, which is 1. What else can I cancel? The y. Okay, so what am I left with? The z and the 1. Well, so just the z. I don't need the 1. Okay, now let's go to the next term. Same thing. Let's cancel what we can cancel before we do anything else. It's 0 because all of them are canceled. The x is on the top, the y is on the bottom, and the uh, z is on the bottom also. Hold on, let's do it one at a time. 
Let's do the Y's. That cancels with that, right? That cancels with that for the Z's. But now we got both X's on the top. What's X times X? X squared. Okay. Now let's do the third term. You got it. Plus ZY. There's your answer. See, that looked like a hard problem, but it actually was a very easy problem. As long as you know how to divide. What is this? Uh, X to the... When, I, when I'm dividing, what do I want to do with the exponents? I don't, want to, I don't want to add them, because that's what I did when I was multiplying. So I should subtract them. So, uh, okay. okay. What is this? Yep. What is this? X6. No. Remember, I'm multiplying the bases. So I'm always going to do one level less mathematically to the exponents. That's just a rule you can remember. If you're multiplying the bases, you're going to add the exponents. If you're dividing the bases, you're going to subtract exponents. Oh, okay. Okay? There's one last thing, and that is if you're doing double, what I call double exponentiation, you could just call it exponentiation where I'm, say, taking x squared and I'm going to cube it. Well, now we multiply the exponents. We don't add them, we multiply them. But multiplication is one level less than exponentiation, so it fits with the other two rules. As long as you can remember these three rules, you're going to be in good shape. All right, let's talk just in the last four minutes here. Let's talk about solving linear algebraic equations, such as how do I solve this? You would. Remember, the, the goal is to get to x equals some number. How am I going to change the left side into just x? Um, I don't know. I mean, well, I know. Right, right now, the only thing that's different about it from being just x is that there's, being, there's 5 being added to it. So if I can get rid of this plus 5, I will be left with just x. Well, I can always get rid of the plus 5 by doing the opposite. I'm going to subtract 5. But if I subtract 5 from the left, i got to subtract 5 from the right. Okay? Now, when I do that operation, I'm left with just x. What am I left with when I do that operation? Uh, you're left with, oh man, right for 7. You got it. And notice that 7 is correct. 7 plus 5 is equal to 12. So it's always a good idea to check your answer to make sure that it makes sense. Kind of what a ballpark check would be. Okay, let's do another one.
How am I going to get X now? Um, you're going to times uh, that by three and time or times the three by a three and then times the X by a three. You got it. So what this becomes 18. In other words, once I multiply this left side by 3, I don't actually multiply. I don't get 3x over 3. I cancel those two like that. And now I'm left with x equals whatever the result of that is over there. I'll hold it. How do you do this one? Hmm. Got a couple of choices. The easiest thing is to go ahead and add the two and the four. They're both numbers. You can add them. X is two. What's that? X is two. Yeah, yeah, because when I add the 2 and the 4, I get 6, so I end up with 6x equal 12, and now I divide both sides by 6, because 6 is a multiplier, and I get x equal 2, okay? How do I solve this equation? This will be the last one. I'm going to give you a hint. Get rid of your denominators quickly when you're solving equations. Get rid of your denominators. Get rid of your parentheses. There aren't any parentheses here, but there's certainly a denominator. So how can I get rid of it? Um, plus it by 2. Not plus it. This is the denominator down there. This is the numerator. This is the denominator. So there you go. T times everything by 3, including the right side. Okay? Now, what's the left side turn into? The left side? Uh -huh. uh, that would be x minus... Uh, oh, man. Just cancel the 3s. What are you left with? X minus X minus six. Hold on. Just do that part right there. In other words, I see what you're doing. What you're doing is multiplying first before canceling. In other words, you're going three X minus six and then dividing the whole thing by three. Well, you don't need to do that. In other words, this 3 cancels totally with that 3, leaving you with just whatever was there before we started, x minus 2. And then on the right side, we get 30. And now what's the next step? Um, so plus each side by 2. Yeah. You're always going to do the opposite of what it is doing. Right now, the left side is subtracting 2. Well, we've got to do the opposite of that. We've got to add 2. So x equals 32. All right. That's a good place to stop. I think we're making pretty good progress, actually, Garrett. You, uh, you, doing any, you spending any time on A-plus math? Yeah, I had a really busy three days, like sleepovers and... And I really just couldn't get the time in. So I'm, I'm very sorry, and I will work on it this week. Well, that's okay. Yeah, you don't need to apologize to me. It's just in order for you to get your math skills up to where you want them to be, you're going to have to master A plus math. That's all there is to it. There's no way around it. Um, and the only way to master it is by practicing it. Well, we'll do a little bit of practice at our next session. But I don't want to spend all of our sessions on A plus math because 
quite frankly, that's something you can do on your own as well as I can do with you. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just a question of practicing it and drilling it. I can't really practice for you. So, um, but that's, that's what we'll, we'll start on. We'll, we'll, we'll continue with algebra. I know that you're going to have a test on algebra, so you're going to need a little bit of basic algebra knowledge. But most important, if you want to build a very strong foundation in mathematics, you got to get a good foundation in arithmetic. Multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction of positive and negative numbers. That's what I mean by that. Get so you're really good at those four things. Okay. All right. All right, Garrett. I will talk to you next time.